Hello everyone, you guys are listening to the very first episode of Breezewood Radio. Um, we're, we've taken an advantage of a scenario, and that scenario being we have a studio, and we have audio equipment, and we're able to record, and talk with artists, and enjoy music. So what we're trying to do, and what we are going to do with this program, is we're not really going to be kind of focusing on the genre, uh, we're not going to be focusing on a type of uh, a niche market, we're going to be focusing on anything that inspires whether it be singing, whether it be storytelling, whether it be talking about uh, some kind of uh, maybe a mission statement or some kind of project you, that you've got coming up. If you're doing it to inspire people, then we want to hear it. And today, our very first guest in the studio are the King Twins. You folks are going to love these ladies. They are 68. Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> 62. 68 year old rappers if you can believe it they're also great um, authors and and writers they've got several books out in fact i I met with them uh, just a couple of days ago when they opened up the truck of the car i could not believe all the stuff that i've seen and i mean two or three different books uh, photos all kind of good stuff so they're they're on a mission uh the same mission that i am and that is to touch hearts and change lives and they are they're great at that and they're Great to be around. So I want you to, in, I'm going to introduce, no, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but they're the King Twins, and here they are. Hello, everyone. My name is Kat, and I am the Good Twin. And my name is Margaret King, and I am the Better Best Twin. So you can keep that straight. I know you can. I love it. They just got back from a big festival. Um with how many other sets of twins? 2,000 sets of twins. 2,000 sets of twins. So I can imagine for all of us that aren't twins, that would have been some more place to be, and we would probably be all dizzy-headed by now. But y'all share with us what, what y'all experienced there. Well, we walk into a gymnasium, and there's 2,000 sets of twins. And we're twins, of course, and we know why people stare at us. We walk in, and we feel like we are on another planet and there cannot possibly be this many twins, triplets, and quads in the world. So, yeah, we just, we absolutely have a blast when we go there. We see twins from five years ago that have just grown up before our our eyes, and we just absolutely have the best time there ever. The talent shows the favorite, so ask us about that. Yeah, after a while. definitely. I, that's a, was my next question. When y- when y'all said y'all were part of a talent show, does that a little bit of everything, singing, storytelling? What what all what all did they have going on? Well, I entered us into the first talent show the the second year we were up there, so four years ago, and we get up there, and Kat looks at the program, and she says, "Billy and Bob, they are you know five years old singing." And then Mary and Jerry are doing gymnastics, and she goes all the way down half the page, and it says, oh, here's Billy Bob and Jerry Bob, and they're going, they're 38 years old. I thought this was a kid's contest, and I said, no, no, we're going to do fine. But we get up there, and we rap, and we just have so much fun. Actually, the guy that, the twins that run it said, this is a joke, right? When they looked at us and saw it, and I said, we said, no, it, we're not a joke. We're not a joke. Well, we don't want you making fun of us. I said, no, no, we're serious. We're real rappers. We're legit rappers, and we got out there, and halfway through the first rap, we had to stop because the audience was laughing so hard. Wow. And we get through, and we get a standing ovation, That's probably because they can't believe 65-year-old women can remember that many lines, but... Uh, and we come up, we came off the stage, and he says, "I believe you are a crowd favorite." That's so we've awesome. been doing it every year and love it. That's great. Well, you know what? Nowadays, especially nowadays, I mean, this world needs more honesty, needs more truth, it needs more love. You know, definitely more laughter. Um, we got so much stuff going on in society now that um, it's just amazing. I mean, you almost think that people have just lost every bit of common sense that there is. Um, in fact, was the funny thing was we were talking about, I was talking with some friends of mine just a while back about business, you know, and how business is handled different now and, you know, how some of it's just, you don't even, you, you can't even put the word business to it because there's so many, so much shenanigans going on and, and wrong dealings to where it's, it's amazing. In fact, 
one of the guys I was talking to, he just got out of sales school and going to college and studying marketing and, and, and sales and all this stuff. He told me point blank, he said, Mr. Edwards, he said, here's the thing. He said, now, now this guy was, you know, raised in a church home, so he's a good good Christian kid, 28, 29 years old. And I keep calling them kids because they're a lot older than, younger than I am. But he told me point blank, he said, now, he said, now in our sales seminars, he said, we are taught that if you're lying to close the sale, that it's not really lying. It's called creative closing. Hmm. And I about, I about felt, I said, you were kidding me. He said, no, he said, that's just part of the, technique of you trying to you know trying to close the deal so we have taken creative closing to a new level in society nowadays um and it it made me think about uh, you know one of the the raps and one of the stories that y'all talk about about being colorblind and gracious day is this world needs that now more than ever um i mean you, you were talking about the you, we're going to talk a little bit about a book that they're writing called about josephine and there it talks around that scenario but while we're talking about that I want you girls to do um, do the rap of Colorblind. I want everybody to hear this. Y'all listen to this. Go through life colorblind. Close your eyes and you're colorblind. Walk through life this way and you will find color of skin is not on your mind. Get to know someone and it won't matter the color of their skin. They might become your lifelong friend. Treat people you meet with respect and they'll treat you the same, I suspect. Diversify your circle of friends. You'll find that circle never ends. Close your eyes and you're colorblind. Walk the right this way and you will find color of skin is not on your mind. Keep in mind the golden rule. You know, the one you learned in grade school. Treat others the way you want to be treated so those you love won't feel defeated. Respect toward others is a powerful tool. So always be mindful of the golden rule. How you treat someone says a thing or two. So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Close your eyes and you're colorblind. Walk through life this way and you will find color of skin is not on your mind. Go through life colorblind. Wow, that's awesome. That's a good message, isn't oh, it? Oh, man, I love it. Oh, man, I just love it, love it. Because we, we, a lot of times in society, we forget that the person across the street from us or the person beside us is also a human being with feelings and you know, heartfelt em- emotions, and you never know what those people are going through. Everybody's going through something. Oh, exactly. I mean, and, and we complain about the least of little things. I remember one day uh, me and Denise was, you know, walking down the sidewalk here in, in Nashville, and I was complaining. I've, I've got an ankle that I broke when I was a kid. I think I might have been 19, 20 years old, but it still bothers me. You know, ever ever so often it'll swell up, and I remember us walking and me saying, man, my ankles bother me. And no sooner did I say that to where I looked across the road and there was another gentleman helping another gentleman up on the curb in his wheelchair. Mm. And this guy had his whole left leg taken off. Mm. And I thought instantly, I said, Lord, I am so sorry for complaining about my ankle. I am so blessed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I won't do that again. So it's funny how my ankle got to feeling better right then. Um, but anyway, there's, there's a lot of the simple things we complain about and we, we neglect how blessed our lives are. And speaking of the the thing, the colorblind scenario, tell me and tell the audience how that came about. And let's talk a little bit about Josephine. Well, Our Josephine was our third book, and it's a true story that takes place in 1957 in the deep south of Vicksburg, Mississippi. We were visiting our grandmother and great-grandmother at a time when uh, society was on the cusp of the um, civil rights movement. And so it was a separate but equal society, but we soon learned that it was separate, but it was not equal. Right. We were nine and Josephine was 16 and she was our first African-American friend. And people say, well, how can that be? Separate but equal, 1957. And she was. She was our first African-American friend. And we absolutely fell in love with Josephine. 
We could not wait every day to see Josephine when she would come in for those two hours to help grandmother feed our great-grandmother. Wow. And we just shadowed her, yeah. and she would shoo us away. And she would say, now I got to get through so I can go home and help my mother, but I'll tell y'all a story on the front porch before I leave. So we scooted off to the front porch and waited for Josephine. Wow, that's awesome. It is, and we just we absolutely loved her. Um, we waited every day for her to get there. And in between those hours, we had to kind of fill in the day, you know, with our shenanigans yeah. and chores that grandmother would have us do. And I'm telling you, there were some crazy old ladies on her street. <laughs> because, you know, back then, uh, people with dementia didn't go to a nursing home. Right. They stayed oh, wow. in their own homes, and they died in their homes. And they were all dotted up and down Grandmother Street, and yeah. she would send us over there with food uh, because she was not going to let them go hungry. She, they were going to have one decent meal. And so we got to meet all those crazy old women and uh the the tales that we can tell about those are just unbelievable now what what really what stood out about josephine that 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 kind of drew y'all to her i mean other than her being a neighbor was there anything really particular that stood out that just kind of made y'all really just feel connected to her well you know i think as soon as we got there and we met her and we started talking to her we started seeing the separate but equal scenario was separate, all right, yeah. but it was not equal. And the things that two little nine-year-old white girls could do, 16-year-old yeah. Josephine couldn't do. As <clears throat> we were walking up the street to go to the grocery store, she actually had to walk behind us up the wow. street. And we would keep urging her to come stand between us. And she would say, girls, I can't walk up there beside you I'll get in trouble and I'm not going to get in trouble for you two rascals wow you know in 1954 when um, the little African American integrated the Arkansas school that kind of set things in motion and in Vicksburg Mississippi a an African American could not even walk on the sidewalk in front of a white school they had to cross the street walk down the sidewalk and then cross back over and we said why josephine why and she would just say girl she don't understand uh that's just the way things are she knew what it was what was going on we didn't but she was trying to protect both of us and, and when she would sit in the back of the bus we wanted to sit back there with her we we did not want to be separated from her or we wanted her to sit in the front of it with us but she could not and we could not sit back with her and we just kept asking why why well when you, I, I think society even you know society created that then it's, it's learned yeah. and, and i think we're doing the same thing now i mean i think we're feeding things um that distract us from being who we are you know it kind of changes it, it makes us change who we are just like just like Josephine she couldn't be who she wanted to be she could not no, she there's no way you know so she had to she had to be a different person in order to just get by I know and our grandmother and great-grandmother absolutely loved her and protected her Wow. and she t- our grandmother said don't get her in trouble you don't understand how things are she absolutely loved Josephine and her family and um, it was just the this our Josephine is the gentle side of race relations in 1957. It's been reviewed as "To Kill a Mockingbird Meets the Help." Oh, that's awesome! That's pretty good to be yeah. sitting between those two. No books. doubt. I no think doubt. the most important thing that we learned. You've heard the coin, uh, the phrase that's coined, um, uh, "paying it forward." Right. Well, it wasn't coined back in 1957, but as we look back on that time, we can see that Josephine paid forward to two little girls respect that one person has for another, regardless of skin color. And all these years later, we want to honor her by writing this book, and that's exactly what we've done. That's awesome. We're going to take a break here. We are with the King Twins, and we're going to come right back and talk about that book. Awesome. Just a minute. 
This is Denise with the Real Estate Minute. Are you looking for a career that challenges and excites you? And a career that offers you enough flexibility for family, friends, and life balance? Then real estate may be for you. Whether you're a seasoned agent of many years or a newly licensed agent, at ERA Strother Real Estate, we have all the support and tools you need to succeed. Our ongoing training programs will keep you up to date on industry changes, technology, marketing, and social media. We never stop learning. ERA Strother Real Estate also prides itself on being a global leader in relocation and corporate services. Quite simply, we care about service, about integrity, and about making a difference. Find our offices in Fayetteville, Harnett County, Southern Pines, and Raleigh. To learn more, call us today at 910-864-2327. This is Denise Strother with the Real Estate Minute. Follow me on Twitter or check us out at erastrother.com. We're back with the King Twins, and we are going to talk about the book Josephine. And we're going to talk about, share with us about the movie. Oh, my gosh. Well, one of the first things, once this book was published... We went down to see Josephine, who's now 75, and we asked her, Josephine, if this becomes a blockbuster movie, what would you like to have out of it? And she said, she walked us out on her porch, and she pointed to this little piece of land right next to her, and she said, I would just like to have a two-bedroom home that we can live in. But we decided she needed a three-bedroom home because she lives with her daughter, Sherry, and her granddaughter, Kennedy. So they would need a three-bedroom home. So one of our main goals is to get a house for Josephine. That's awesome. Josephine said, but before you do that, I've got to stop the roof roof from leaking. Oh, wow. And I said, what? So for years, her roof has been leaking two or three places in her house. Mm. And she took us in there, and she said, every time it rains, we just cringe. And I I said, you go out there, Josephine, if you don't mind, get us two or three bids, find the contractor you trust, send the bill to us. Wow. Because you're not going to go through another rain without a new roof on your house. And so that's exactly what we did. She calls us every time it rains now. It's not raining in my house. That's, That's awesome. what she says. I just want y'all to know it's not raining in my now, see, house. Now, see, that makes it all worth it right there. Oh, That's, my gosh. That's great. We wouldn't have it any other way. That's we awesome. just want to embrace her and love her and protect her from anything and everything. And she did that for us. You know, she showed us love. And it's not what you say and what you do. It's how you make people feel. Oh, yeah. I mean, and she just made us feel loved. And, and that's sometimes, that's, uh, well, a lot of times, you know, we uh, people think nowadays you can't do anything unless somebody's writing you a check or you're getting paid. They, they forget how it feels good just to do something good for somebody and then appreciate it. They do so for her, to, for her to appreciate it meant as much to y'all as, you know, you're going forth and, and making that happen. And you know. I can't tell you how many times we talk to her. It's not raining in my house. No, that's great. We love it. We just love it. It made it all worth it. Oh, yeah. Now, that would be hard not to tear up the first time she called oh, and, and we told cried. you that. You know, I guess we so. did. When we found her um, about five or six years ago, we didn't know. We had not kept up with her in the last 30 or 40 years. And we knew we wanted to write this book, so we needed to find her. So I called the paper, and I said, do you have a Josephine Harris in the obituaries? Because, you know, wow, that's yeah. where you have to start. Sure, yeah. And they, she went back 40 years. She says, there hadn't been a Josephine that's died in Vicksburg in the last 40 years. Goodness I said, gracious. oh, good, good. Wow. She said, check with the superintendent of education. I think he lives in the neighborhood that you're describing. And I did, and he called me back in five minutes and said, I found your Josephine. Really? Now, that, I didn't know that story. That's good. And that's I great. called her. We called her, and we started screaming with each other oh, and crying and good. visiting. And then it was, you know. So she remembered y'all right off the bat. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, We're hard yeah. to forget now. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. Now, did you, did you talk to her first on the phone, or did you go see her? We talked to her first on the phone, and it was about the next week we went down to see her and told her what we were we How had in mind. That? And you know, every chapter we wrote in this book, we sent it to Josephine 
to make sure we had it right. Yeah. That we were telling the story correctly. And we would call her later in the week and would say, Joe, have you had time to read it? She says, oh, yeah, you're taking me back to that kitchen on Beaumont wow, Avenue. Wow, how about that? So we feel like we really do have this book right, and it's a history book for all young people in, in school to read about um, the history of um, 1957. Yeah. And, you know, when we walk into a school to talk about Josephine and other things, we, of course, walk in and we're old people. Yeah. And we right. rap and we do this yeah. and we're so cool and they love us. But we tell them about Josephine and you see this classroom filled with diversity. And we tell them when we were in school, you could not sit, you were not even in school with anyone of any other color. Yeah. And they look, they look at us like, are you for real? Yeah, no way that happened. Yeah, <laughs> no exactly. way that, but it did. And we're this book tells it just like it is. And she's proud of it, and we're proud of it. And it's now being made uh, into a movie. We've talked to producers. Uh, we have some that are interested, especially one. And we are just so hopeful that our Josephine, our Josephine, will become a movie. And now, you, you've got, um, did y'all tell me you got a screenplay already done? Yeah. Or? The screenplay is finished, and um, the producer has it. He loves it. He said, if you decide to put anything else in it, revise it anyway, because a screenplay is meant to be edited. Right, yeah. He said, just send me what you want us to put in it. And uh, any other conflicts that you can think of that you didn't put in the book, just send it to me. Because he says, it's based on a true story. Awesome. And that's what uh, we want to honor Josephine with this book and this movie. That's so, great. so if you got if you have other people that want to get involved with the book or with the movie or anything that y'all doing, what where how do they get in touch with you? Well, they can get in touch with me, okay. or they can go to kingtwins.com. They can email me at yalltwins39 at gmail dot com, or they can call me. I'd love to talk to them at six six two eight three two seven five four six one more time with the number six six two eight three two seven five four six awesome we're now at the point where it's fundraising time so that's uh that's going to be a big hurdle the good thing is there are not any blow-up scenes or technology that's involved yeah. in it no car races and crashes and anything like that so it brings the cost down considerably right and then um our producer wants to get it out to all the uh distributed throughout the, the united states which will cost another couple of million yeah. so we are in the fundraising process of it now and um looking for foundations or people who want to invest in it so it'd be awesome and, and you may even run across somebody who wants to help you build the house for josephine Oh, my goodness. I mean, that would be something that could happen. Oh, my gosh. Now, let me tell you, know. you something. That would be a dream come true. The movie would be awesome, but for her to have this house would be a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? And that's not that's not a humongous task when you got a handful of folks that say, you know what, we're going to get together. We're going to help you all make this happen. I mean, a couple of contractors could knock that out. Oh, I know. That would be so wonderful. Everything we do whether it's entertain, whether it's rap, whether it's write, everything we do comes full circle to building Josephine a house. Awesome. That's great. So that's our, that's our passion. Josephine is our passion. Well, and if we take care of the house ahead of schedule, Wouldn't then maybe you can build another house for somebody else. We will. <laughs> that is well. We want to set up a foundation and help people who, uh, who need it. You know, yeah. we really do. We want to find the other Josephines out there, and we want to help them as well. So that's what we're all about. It's 68 years old. Uh, that's our mission in life. That's great. That's great. We're going to take one more break, and we're going to be right back with the King Twins. Thank y'all. Brand new CD, Voices. It's coming. My friend Larry Stewart asked Steve and Rudy and me to be a part of this. We were honored to do it. And uh, you're going to love it. It'll be, your soul will be a little better off from listening to it. And I tell you what, you're going to need a coat too. You're going to get cold chills because the harmonies on some of these things, these wonderful old hymns of the church, you will be blessed. So remember, voices. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. We are back with Breezewood Radio, and we are back with the King Twins. Hello. <laughs> 
You folks are just absolutely, if y'all could be sitting here with me, you would really love these two ladies. They're adorable. They they work off of each other. I mean, they sometimes know what the next one's going to say first. And so I, I'm, I've had a good time working with them. In fact, um, when did we do the CD? Was it was it last year? Last it year. It was last yeah. year. We did a CD project um, with, with them. And... Um, it's funny. I mean, it was fun because me as a musician and producing and do what I do, 90% of the stuff that I do, I'm working <laughs> with <laughs> I'm working with other musicians. And, and we're not. <laughs> and we're not musicians. He and, had his work cut out for him. <laughs> it was awesome. But we had, uh, what we did is we, we, we first realized that we couldn't do it with a click track. And what a click track means in the music world is you got something that's keeping keeping the tempo. It's kind of it's kind of cuz we didn't have any. It's kind of like a kind of like a metronome. Well, we did I think we did try that for a little while. We did. It didn't and it work. just got to where it's like okay, you know what the the the, the metronome, the click track is wrong. We're right. The metronome's <laughs> wrong. So we we had to we got it I, I can't remember what we finally wound up doing. Did I record you both on the same mic? Is sometimes, that what we finally did? Sometimes and then separately and then you put them together. And sometimes you had one of us standing on the outside. I trying, remember trying that to now. Key the other one, and so she could feed off. That of I line. forgot about that. It was about the craziest that. thing I've ever been. Well, to. here's the here's what, and this is what the people on the radio can't see. I had one of you in the vocal booth. That's right. And the other one on the outside of the vocal booth, looking through the window, so the other one could see you through the window and <laughs> talking back. I remember that. We now. have a picture of that. <laughs> that and was then, awesome. And then you you figured out we could not. Uh, remember our lines and our words if there was music behind us and we kind of told you that oh, straight up i forgot up. about that that's because right you put music behind us and we, we go forgot what we were supposed, supposed to say because <laughs> we're listening to the music so that we did right. it uh, uh we just got in there and we did our raps and then you came back behind it and put music to us and that, that was crazy you know it was funny too and that was one of those things where we just totally created the whole thing from scratch from scratch and had to find things that worked some things didn't work but i think we i think we wound up with a with a good project i think it turned out fun we love it oh um, I, I know it's something the kids will love well the, there's also the the kids cd as well that has four raps on it just from the uh children's books That's that right. we have yeah. kicking and screaming no kicking and screaming is for preschoolers going to get their shots for the first time and then for third, fourth, fifth graders, there's some accelerated reading uh, books out there. The Backyard Camp Out. Hey, you know what? Y'all y'all do one of those now. Do one of those for the kids. The wraps. Yeah, Let's just do one the Backyard Camp Out. Okay. That'd be cool. So we have a book that we wrote uh, for children called The Backyard Camp Out. And it's about twins who have an aggravating brother. And they camp out in the backyard. So we're going to do the Backyard Camp Out rap. Hit it. How does it start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, kids, let's give a shot. Listen up, it's the Backyard Camp Out. The Backyard Camp Out pits three girls against two boys. The girls are freaked out when they hear a creepy noise. <laughs> The ghoul in the ghost story comes to life at the haunted house where roaches cross the floor and a big old bobcat keeps watch on a mouse. They play a funny game called Bomb, 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 and a scavenger hunt is great nighttime fun. You'll have to read the book to see which team won. The aggravating boys Get what they deserve. The girls sneak into their camp, and that takes a lot of nerve. See which campers win and which ones get beat. Revenge is oh so sweet. That's a wrap. Love y'all. That's awesome. Where where did the that's a wrap love y'all? When did how how did that come to, to come to be a part of all of them? I have no idea. I we don't. just started saying it one, t one day. <laughs> we always wanted to say that's a wrap. Yeah. 
And then the natural thing for Southerners to oh, say yeah. pretty much, love y'all. So it. we just said, that's a wrap. Love y'all. I love it. That's and awesome. With every wrap we do just about. Well, good so deal. Yeah. I, and so the books are um, Boo in the Backyard Camp Out and Kicking and Screaming. And then we are uh, in the process of writing a bullying book, anti-bullying book, really. Um, it's all about a bully and how we handle the situation. So it will be for third, fourth, and fifth graders as well. And Trey, we were here, what, two years ago in Nashville uh, taping our um, uh, selfie wrap right. down Printer's Alley. Right. That oh, yeah. was so much fun. And down Broadway. Oh, my gosh. I'll never forget, we were had this selfie stick, and we were doing the wrap, and people would just stop on the curb and jump out and ask us, what are y'all doing? Y'all are so cool. You're so cute. I want to get in on it. That's great. And so they just joined us on, in the selfie wrap, and it was so much fun. That was one of the best projects we've ever done. Well, we had a, and had a blast putting it together and helping y'all with it and making it happen. Um, glad y'all could join us today. Again, we were the queen, the King Twins. <laughs> we the are queen. Hey, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm going to call y'all the Queen <laughs> that's Twins. Good. That's good. The King Twins. Uh, be sure that y'all go to thekingtwins.com, and you will be able to find every one of their links down on their social media. We're also going to have some videos up on the video that they talked about today. Um, we're going to have some of their music and also a place where you can buy their CDs. We'll have a place where you can donate to them to help them out of what they're trying to do and trying to accomplish, and you will be able to find every bit of it at thekingtwins.com. And thank y'all for listening, and we appreciate the girls being here with us. Thank you. Thank you.